Hello, this is the second video on methods of proof. So in this video, what we look at is proof by contrapositive. Um, so I want to make sure that we have this uh, introduction material in this video as well. So very quickly, uh, a theorem is a mathematical statement that is true and can be verified as true. And proving a theorem, what you have to do is make a convincing argument. It needs to be understandable. It needs to um, take the reader who has a basic background of the mathematical words and phrases and symbols and takes them from point A to point B. Okay, And um, we have definitions that are clear and concise and exact. And so um, here are some we'll be using in our two examples. Um, what does it mean for an integer to be even? It means that it can be written as twice another integer. What does it mean for an integer to be odd? It means that it can be written as twice another integer plus one. Um, parity is, uh, if you have the same parity, you're both even or odd. If you have opposite parity, then one's even, one's odd. What does it mean for a number to divide another number? A divides B. If it can be, if, so let me first talk about the symbol. The symbol for A divides B. Is it, this is a vertical line, a little longer than the variables or the numbers. And so as an example, six divides 72. And so the definition of A divides B is that B can be written as A times some other integer. 72 can be written as 6 times some other integer. The integer is 12. Okay. The letter, uh, the, the A is the divisor of B, and B is the multiple of A. Okay, great. Uh, we don't need these other um, definitions. And, but but they're there if, if you need um, need them. So I want to skip to the um, slide on contrapositive. There we go. So what is the contrapositive and what is a proof by contrapositive? When you have a conditional statement, if P, then Q, there is a statement that is logically equivalent to it. You get that statement by switching the two and negating them at the same time. So you switch and you negate and you get the contrapositive. If not Q, then not P. These are logically equivalent. And so if you are tasked with proving if P then Q, then what you can do instead is prove if not Q, then not P. Okay. All right. So, an example. So what you do, honestly, is a direct proof on the contrapositive. So you start with not Q, chain together logical mathematical definitions and statements to get to not P. When you've done that, then you have proven the original statement. Okay. If N squared is even, then N is even. Simple statement, right? But direct proof isn't something that can be readily done and so um, you know the fact that 16 is even can be then uh, we can from the statement say uh, it's going to mean that 4 is even the thing that you square that makes sense for sure and we can think of all kinds of examples but um, we need to prove it and so to prove it we are going to do the contrapositive switch them and negate them What's the opposite of even? Odd. And so we say then by contrapositive, if n is odd, then n squared is odd. And it'll be very much like um, the proof that we did um, on the last video where we have um, 
a, a direct proof on this contrapositive. We start with the statement that n is odd. What does that mean by definition? It means that n can be written as twice an integer plus 1. You want me to look at n squared? Okay, fine. I'll take n times n. That's what n squared means. So I'll take 2a plus 1 times 2a plus 1. Now, to do this, you're going to require FOIL. It's a little bit of algebra. We have a binomial times a binomial. We multiply the first, the outer, the inner, and the last. It spells out the word FOIL. 2a times 2a is 4a squared. 2a times 1 is 2a. 2a times 1 is 2a. They combine to give you 4a, and then 1 times 1 is 1. So n squared, when n is odd, will be equal to this formula, 4a squared plus 4a plus 1, for some integer a. What are you trying to prove? I'm trying to prove that n squared is odd. I'm trying to show that it can be written as double an integer plus 1. My job is to take this expression and write it as double an integer plus one. So the first two terms, I have the plus one, let's leave that there. The first two terms have a two in common. I know they have a four and an a in common. Don't factor that out. The goal is to write it as twice an integer plus one. So pull out a two. What you're left with will be two a squared plus two a. And just recast that as a different variable w. And what you're looking at then is n squared written as twice an integer plus 1. W is just going to be based on what a is, and a is just any integer. W is 2a squared plus 2a. So you did it. You just proved that n squared is odd. If n is odd, then n squared is odd. The fact that you proved that is equivalent to you proving the original. They have the same truth value. Whenever one is true, the other one is true. So on top of you proving this, you also prove the original that if n squared is even, then n is even. Proof by contrapositive. A direct proof on the contrapositive, switching and negating. That's our first example. Let's look at one more. Let A and B be integers. If 5 does not, the slash through this vertical line mean does not. If 5 does not divide the product AB, then 5 does not divide A and 5 does not divide B. It makes sense. Um, 5 does not divide 32. Um, the product of 32, let's call it 8 times 4. 5 does not divide 32. And then from that, we can conclude that 5 does not divide 8. And 5 does not divide 32 at the same time. I'm sorry, 5 does not divide 4. Sorry, 5 does not divide 8. And 5 does not divide 4. Because 5 didn't divide 32, their product. That makes sense. Okay, we have to prove it. A direct proof on this is difficult, so we'll go for the contrapositive, switch and negate. Now watch the switch. When you switch, then what's in blue here goes in front as your hypothesis. That's where your starting point. But when you negate an and, the, the and statement, let me write it as P's and Q's instead of sets. Uh, if you take P and Q and negate it, You use De Morgan's law, and what you do with that then is you change it to an or, and you negate each. So that's what we did. Negating a, a, a not divide means divide, and the inside changes from an and to an or. So that's what we start with. We're going to do a direct proof on this. 
if five divides a or five divides b then five will divide the product of a and b okay the negating is dropping the the does not divide and changing it to divide all right great state the fact that you're about to start the proof state the hypothesis chain together definitions and logical mathematical statements to lead to the conclusion it makes sense if five divides 10 okay or 5 divides 25 we can conclude then that 5 divides 250 one of these could actually be false I could change the uh, 5 divides 10 to be we know it's not true uh, 5 divides 21 it doesn't work. Five doesn't divide 21, that's okay. But five does divide 25. And so then you could say that um, five divides the product of 21 and 25. For an or to be true, you only need one of them to be true. And so what we're gonna do with this, when you have an or, you cut it into cases. You take the first part of the or and see where that leads you. You take the second part of the or and you see where that leads you. It's different than how you handle an and. So case one. Suppose five divides A. What does that mean by definition? It means that A can be written as five times some integer. Okay, great. So then let's take a look at AB. AB, substituting the fact that A is 5W, we have that AB is 5WB. What are we trying to prove? We're trying to get to the point of saying that 5 will divide the product of A and B. The definition of that is that AB can be written as 5 times an integer. So just take the WB, recast it as X, and yes, AB can be written as 5X. And that's the definition of 5 divides AB. So one side of the OR leads you to your conclusion. The other side of the or will also lead you to your conclusion. Case two, suppose the other side, that five divides B, exactly the same argument. That means that B can be written as five times an integer. Use a different variable. Substitute that into the product AB. Replace B by five Z. Rearranging things, that means that AB is five AZ or ZA. Recast ZA as a different variable Y and you have that AB is 5Y. What's the purpose? Why are you doing this? To show that 5 divides AB in both cases. Both case 1 and both case 2 lead to the fact that 5 divides AB. For an OR to be true, you have to have one of them true. We just show that if either one of them is true, we can get to our conclusion. So we're done. So be on the lookout for when you have an or, cut the or into cases and show that the, both sides of the or lead to your conclusion. And the conclusion is that 5 divides AB. So we've proven the contrapositive. Therefore, we have proven the original statement. Don't forget the big picture is that you, you were asked to prove something else, but they are equivalent to each other. So you proven the equivalent means that you proved the original. Okay, great. So that is the end of our two examples of proof by contrapositive. In the other video, we did two examples of direct proof. Thank you.